What's up everyone? My name is Samir. Today we're going to be going over how to make the easiest, cleanest, and least barrier to entry Neapolitan pizza at home. I love pizza. You love pizza. That's why you're watching this video. That picture on the thumbnail definitely grabbed your attention. Here's some more photos. I'm going to show you guys how to make this pizza today at home and it is real, authentic Neapolitan pizza. What makes Neapolitan pizza good? To me, when I have a pizza, I look for a pizza that has a bite. That's the number one thing I do when I bite into a pizza is I want to feel that gnaw, that rip, that crust chew, right? Crust is good, right? We want that crisp too, right? So we need that chew and that crisp. Those are two factors that make pizza good. This is culminated in Neapolitan pizza through the ingredients, which are very high standard. You need to have certain ingredients for it to be called Neapolitan pizza. If you don't have those ingredients done the right way, you can't call it Neapolitan pizza. The methodology, the way you cook your pizza, needs to also be a certain way or else you cannot call it Neapolitan pizza. We also need to have a home oven. We need to have an oven that gets to around 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes people even say 900. If you're in that 800, 750, 850 range, you're good to go. I use an Univolt. It's a home electric oven. I believe that electric ovens are the future. There are ways of using your home oven to do it as well with a pizza steel, which can get to around 600, I've seen. Uh, some people even hack their ovens using the self-cleaning mode. They remove the lock, so when they put their oven on self-cleaning mode, they can still open it up. That's another trick. I haven't done that because I don't want to avoid my insurance, so I bought this instead. Uh, let's come take a look at what this is right here. The Univolt uh, gets to around 850 degrees max Fahrenheit. Uh, it comes with this peel, which is pretty nice. And uh, the inside's a little dirty right now, but it does have a self-clean feature where if you keep it on that highest temperature for a long time, it will clean itself. You flip that stone over and the bottom side's clean. There's a, a top and bottom heater element. And like I said, the three things that make this recipe good, efficient, clean, and low barriers to entry. So people think to make Neapolitan pizza, you need to have a giant brick oven. No, this is good. This is the way that I found of getting to the highest level of Neapolitan pizza with all those three factors I mentioned. We have this blender. You can make the dough by hand, but using a food processor with a dough hook attachment like I have here, I'm using a Ninja blender. Using the dough hook attachment on the blender really makes the process so much easier. I started off making Neapolitan pizza by hand and it was a tedious mess. It took a long time. I was good, it tasted really good, but I made it in the uh, machine the first day and I realized I could really crank this out. We now are gonna get into the ingredients. There's a couple non-negotiables that you cannot not skip, right? Everything that I've mentioned so far, you can maybe get around with by using the oven. Maybe you can go a little bit lower with temperature. There's some debate about that, but there's certain things which cannot be debated. One of them is double zero flour. There are two brands that I, uh, sorry, there's one brand that I really like. It's this um, King Arthur brand. It's a very great brand. Uh, I really like it, but when I'm cooking uh, large amounts of pizzas or I just want to be quick and dirty and not really care, um, I, I use the one kilogram bags. It doesn't really matter what brand. I've tried Caputo. Um, I've actually never tried this brand before, so we're gonna try it out today. But as long as you get that double zero flour, it's okay. Some people get into the nitty and gritty about the protein content, which some people will, you'll see referred to as a double U rating on the flour. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're not gonna get too deep into that. You can look at that up if you want to. But I'm gonna need some yeast. Uh, the traditional recipe calls for um, fresh yeast, but dry yeast is acceptable. Uh, I've seen some people using a poolish sort of style where they make their own sourdough starter. I've started to experiment with that. Maybe I'll upload a recipe later of a more, uh, a less efficient way of making this dough, but for now, this will do. Instant dry yeast, get yourself some. Nice salt. Get yourself a good quality salt. This is kosher salt. Uh, if you have sea salt, use that. Um, I like kosher salt the way it tastes, because uh, I'm kosher but this is really good. Get yourself a high quality salt. Do not use iodized salt, it's really bad. You need some nice quality water. I'm using purified water for my Brita. That's good. 
don't use sink water. It'll change the way. Some people say New York water makes New York style pizza taste that way. Italian water makes Italian pizza taste that way. I don't know if that's true, but I do can, I can, I definitely can testify that using a higher quality water makes your uh, pizza taste better. Non-negotiable number two besides the flour. San Marzano tomatoes. You need to get San Marzano tomatoes. There is no non -nego there is no alternative for this. If you're not using it, you're not making Napolitan pizza. Same if you're not using double zero flour, it's not Napolitan pizza. These uh, tomatoes grow in volcanic ash in a very specific region of, I believe, Italy called San Marzano. They're grown a special way. They have special PDOs to come into the U.S. and that sort of thing. They're canned a special way. I prefer to find ones that don't have basil. Unfortunately, this one does, but I got it because it was in a three pack and I'm trying to get uh, bulk and expand my ability to make this dough. So uh, I settled for this, but we're going to use basil. That's the next ingredient. Non-negotiable number three, you need basil. I'm sorry. Basil is very, very essential. It's hard to find in some stores, but I find mine at uh, fresh local markets. Um, fresh basil, can't be dried. Like I was saying, when you're making the sauce, we're gonna go into the how to do that, but putting fresh basil in the sauce is very recommended. I put extra, even if basil is already in the can, but I prefer to have a sauce that doesn't have basil in the can and that I add on top. That just tastes better and fresher. Lastly, be a proofing bin. After we make the dough, we're gonna do a bulk ferment in that giant bulb shape. Uh, the, the, the giant uh, dough ball, and then we're gonna wait a couple hours. We're gonna cut it up into six different pieces. So one serving will make six pies. Uh, you might have already seen on the screen earlier at this video at this point, but one will make six pies. I found this to fit six perfectly. It works really well. This was like like 10, ten bucks. I got like a two pack for like 10 to $12 on Amazon. Uh, let's get into making the dough. All right guys, let's make some dough. We're gonna start off very simply with 600 milliliters of water to our one kilogram of flour. Some things went wrong. We had to use that other uh, brand that I said was my favorite and measure it out instead of using the one kilogram. Um, so we're just gonna measure out 100 milliliters. 100 milliliters with a 500 now. So 600 total. This is a 60% hydration dough. some yeast, quarter teaspoon, heaping. Mix on low for one second. Add half of your flour. Half your flour added. Thirty seconds. dough come take a look at look at this we see we have a pancake batter like consistency I'm going to take the edges scrape it down look at that texture that we have going right now now let's get a base temperature reading with our thermometer just so we know what we're working with We're around 22.3. Made to be between 23 and 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's add another half of the half that we have left.
30 seconds. We're gonna add our salt in now. One tablespoon. And two teaspoons. Temperature reading. I'm gonna have the rest of our flour run also while oh, that's going up. We're at twenty three. So we've entered our critical period. We're at the lower minimum of what we need to be at for this dough to be good. So as you can see, I'm just cleaning off my lid, trying to keep things a little bit tidy and easier for me when I eventually have to clean this at the end when you guys won't be here. Let's put that lid back on, let's finish this off. As you guys see, no oil added to the dough. seconds. I'm just going to do a quick temperature reading. I'm going to do a little scrape too. I'm going to try to flip what's on the top to the bottom and what's on the bottom to the top because my mixer is not very good. If you have a KitchenAid, you will excel at this stage because you will not need to do this. Just push down the sides like this. I already feel some air in here, which is really good. Take one more temperature reading. I'm saying just about 25. We're actually done. I'm not going to let this go over. So I'm actually going to take this out now. I was going to start incorporating slap and fold. Pick up from the sides, drop down, slap. Don't worry about this texture. When the dough rises, it will regulate. So all we're gonna do now, the dough mixer did a lot of the mixing for us already. So we're really just going to put this into a ball shape by tucking in the corners like this. And we're gonna cover it with a damp and wet towel. Don't worry about this ripping on the surface and that thing. I assure you, when the dough has rested, you will be good. A damp and wet towel, get to it about 70% wet, sorry, 70% dry, put that on top. And that concludes the end of this section. All right guys, time to make the sauce. Let's go. Pour the sauce in the bowl, whole tomatoes, San Marzano, non-negotiable. 28 grams of salt, so we're gonna use one full, tablespoon 
and just one leveled and one shallow. Let's add some basil. I'm adding 10 leaves. You can get your hands in there. Crush up those tomatoes. <clears throat> We're gonna crush up those tomatoes. And there's a reason why we don't use a blender for this part of the process, because using a blender breaks the seeds. And when the seeds are broken, it releases a bitterness into the um, sauce. It's a very big disrespect to these tomatoes because these tomatoes are grown in a very unique climate with very specific conditions and um, uh, we really want to take care of that so you should keep on mashing up these tomatoes by hand until you feel that it has reached the desired level of your taste I like my um, tomato sauce a little crunchy you see there's these little stem parts these are fine. Just make sure you use your nail to sort of break them up. That's okay. And the sauce is done. Catch you guys in the next scene. We're making the pizza. Let's make some pizza now. Uh, we have our thing. We have our dough. Look at how it has become proofed. Look at this. We have some really nice bubbles here, some really nice bubble formation. It's pretty poolish. This is kind of nice. So we're ready to go. Uh, we'll be making two pies, and uh, I hope they'll be good. But I realized that I forgot to mention the cheese in the ingredients list. So uh, we need to use whole milk, um, mozzarella that is low moisture. Uh, shout out to Adam Ragusia. He was the one who uh, showed that you could find this cheese best in stick form. So sticks are usually always um, mozzarella low moisture. This one says part skim. Sometimes they're part skim, sometimes they're whole milk. It doesn't really matter. The really important thing is the low moisture because if you don't get low moisture, when you cook the cheese in the oven, water will ev evaporate and steam and create a separation between the cheese and the crust and it's nasty. So get low moisture, so uh, I kind of like the way the sticks melt when I cut them in this way, uh, but I just like to uh, make like a little disc for them. So I've already gone ahead and done disc forms for the rest of the sticks. Four sticks per pizza works pretty well for me. So I have uh, eight sticks here. I'm about to make two pizzas. So, let's get our semolina. And this is very important now, guys. We're gonna be very liberal with our semolina. Do not be afraid to use semolina. Do not be afraid to use semolina. Your dough will stick. So look, watch this. I'm gonna take some semolina. I'm really just gonna pour a really generous amount on top of one of these six dough balls. Right on top. I'm gonna create a separation between these two with my finger. If I had a tool, I would use it at this point, but I don't know where it went. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this. There we go. So don't ruin the discus formation. Keep it in a discus shape. Try not to ruin the other ones. Sometimes you have to, but it's okay. Keep it in a discus shape. Prop that and plop it down. This is so airy. I don't know if you guys can see this. It just deflated. Um, but get that semolina, pour that on top, flip it over. Pour that semolina on the bottom. 
Now, I want this to be my bottom because it's smoother. So we're gonna start here with our fingers. I really wanna put some more assembly on this. You guys might think I'm using too much, but trust me, this is how much you need. We're gonna take our fingers about an inch away from the crust. And we're gonna simply press into the middle. Let's rotate 90 degrees. Do the same thing, you'll hear some bubbles pop in. Look at that, this is crazy. Okay, it's gonna be really good pizza, guys. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. And notice how I'm spreading out slightly as I am doing this on this side now. Okay. Now, we're here. I'm gonna pick up the crust by the edge. Don't touch the crust. So I'm on the inside of the crust and this hand is gonna be on this side of the crust. I'm making an S. Stretch along the hand, I'm pushing and I'm pulling. Slap it down. Grab on the inside, go on this side, stretch, make an S, slap it down. S, slap it down. Now, when you get to this point, I like to lift it up to see the parts of my pizza which are lighter than the others. And I like to focus on those by just sort of letting gravity really do its work. So we get it to this size and this is about the size of the pizza that I'm looking for currently. Uh, this is good enough for me. That's perfect, really. So I'm just stretching out crust slightly really trying to maintain that crust by touching the inside and this is good trying to get it as circular as possible and that looks pretty good guys so we're gonna go with this okay so I don't waste semolina I'm gonna take some of that semolina that I had from there and just toss that on the peel Drag that pizza on the peel. I'm gonna bring that peel over here. Let's start with the sauce. Do not put sauce on the crust. Start from the center. Get one scoop, two scoops, and spread out from the middle. This looks delicious, guys. This really does look amazing. Cameron's watering right now. His mouth is watering. Get some cheese, evenly spread out the cheese. Looks pretty good. Now, basil. So you can either choose to put your basil on top of your cheese or below your cheese. I actually prefer below your cheese, I'm not gonna lie, I just forgot. So we're gonna put the cheese on uh, below the basil today, right now, for this one pie. We'll make a second one though. I'll show you guys this whole live process. Now, we're gonna take some olive oil if you like, you don't have to, but I have some really nice olive oil that I'm just gonna drizzle on right here. 
helps protect the uh, basil a little bit too. I didn't include that olive oil in the beginning, so I apologize. But it's a little sneak. It's a little sneaky maneuver. Now we want to make sure that our pizza is, oh this is perfect guys. Our pizza is moving on the peel, look at that. And our oven is actually off, so we need to chill for a little bit. We will resume when we're ready to go into the oven. I forgot the oven was off, so give us two, three more minutes. It's about halfway temperature. Go show tell them what the temperature looks like right now. Almost ready. All right, guys, we're back. Ready to go. Pizza oven is ready. Our pizza is moving. I'm just trying to get it on the peel because we have to wait a little bit. And it, it's starting to stick a little bit, but we're good. Watch, ready? We're gonna go, open the oven, go all the way in. One, and we're out. And now, let's get a close up to see how it cooks in there. Shortly, we'll start to see the crust starting to rise tremendously. And that we'll see is the staple of the Neapolitan pizza. I'm gonna want to remove it and give it a flip just cause I kind of put it a little bit close to the edge. Guys, we're approaching the time when we're ready to take this out, almost. The cheese is starting to bubble tremendously, the crust is starting to get brown, and the cheese is starting to get brown, also. That's how we know we are approaching the end. I like my crust a little bit overdone, because I like crunch. So I'm gonna let this go a little bit more, and I'll take it out right in three, two, one, and we'll take it out. We're gonna go onto a rack. And that is pizza Napolitano, guys. So we can go ahead. Take your cutting board of your choice, pizza cutter, You guys hear that crunch and you know it's good. All right guys, we have our pizza. Before we go into making the next pie, I can't wait to have a bite. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Take a fold right there, stuff that tip in, pause, and take a bite. Ready? Bismillah. Valid. Perfect chew. Cheese is amazing. It's probably one of the best pizzas I've ever made in my life. I'm glad I was able to catch that on film. All right, guys. Pizza number two. Let's get after it. All right, everyone. This is Samir. I am here recording this audio a little wise after filming this video. Um, as you guys can see, that was just my cat that ran behind there. Uh, we, I'm putting on this cheese, and this pizza that I'm making right now is a special one. This one, I'm adding some Parmigiano Reggiano on top of that mozzarella. 
And um, as you guys will see shortly that I'm going to add, I added some olive oil, but I'm going to add some balsamic vinegar uh, at the end as well on top of this. This is a really Italian uh, pizza, a really Italian flavor. I'm a really big fan of the flavor combination between balsamic vinegar and um, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. There's actually a dish in Italy where they just mix those two together and eat it as a little snack. All right, guys. Last pizza we're making, pizza number three, is the pizza Mexicano. Uh, let's start. The names are satirical, by the way. So for this next pizza, I did call it the pizza Mexicano. Uh, maybe that was an incorrect name, but it's a Latino style inspired pizza with this Manchego cheese you can see me cutting. And I'm really cutting it pretty rough, uh, removing the crust, which you'll see me do in a second right there. And I'm just putting on these rough slices on top. And then uh, the basil, obviously, and this is actually uh, Gouda cheese. It's aged Gouda. Um, not that aged, very lightly aged. And uh, this is very interesting because when this bakes, as you guys can see, the cheese sort of looks like a New York style cheese and it tastes very amazing. I'm actually not a big fan of Manchego cheese. I thought I would like it. So we got a giant block from Costco and uh, it's good to know that we can put it on pizza now. And this, these are some pizzas that I have made in the past. I made some breakfast style pizzas, chicken on top, rotisserie chicken, uh, sojuk, which is a type of uh, Egyptian sausage. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment if you made it this far. You're, you're real, for real. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.